Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. This is Michelle Benjamin. I'm the Director of Marketing at AudienceX. Today, we are here for the next installment of our Webinar Wednesday series. The topic today, as you can see, and you probably know since you registered, is Take Action, Paid Search During COVID-19. Uh, before I introduce our speaker today, just a couple housekeeping items. We are recording this and we will be sharing the recording with you in case you miss something or want to pass it along. Um, if you have questions at any point, you can use either the chat box or the Q&A function and send those over and we will be answering all the questions at the end if we don't get to them in the middle of the presentation. Our um, presenter today is Chris Clark. He's the Director of Search and Social here at AudienceX. He leads the team that runs our paid search and social campaigns for market marketers and agencies across all industries. And he is very well versed in any paid search campaigns and questions that you may have, which is why he is presenting. So with that, I will pass it over to him and we can get started. Chris, welcome. Thank you, Michelle. Good afternoon, everybody. Appreciate you uh, taking the time out of your day to join us. Today's agenda is going to cover a few different topics. Uh, we're going to touch on current trends in paid search. We're going to move on to actions that any marketer can take. Uh, we'll look at scenario specific tactics and we'll save a bit of time at the end for uh, questions and answers. So let's start with current trends. The good news uh, does exist. There is some good news. Overall, Click-through rate and paid search is up, and cost per click is down. This is generally true across all industries. Um, and those are normally uh, the, the metrics that we want to see moving in those specific directions. So that's nice. Uh, there is bad, though. The bad is that conversion rate across industries is down about 20%. Um, it does vary by vertical, uh, which you know, is something I'm going to repeat throughout this uh, webinar today. But overall, it's roughly down 20%. So the implication is that while users are still interested in purchasing right now, given the increased uncertainty uh, that they're all facing, they're being cautious. They're reevaluating their needs and behaviors and asking themselves you know, whether they really need to purchase something right now or whether they can wait. Uh, they're considering the outlook for their personal income or their business income. And they're asking themselves questions like, Will I have a job next month? Or is this really our business's priority next quarter? You know, for example, do we really need to invest in this software platform by the end of the half? As I said, impact varies by vertical. There are some losers. These are familiar probably to everybody. Travel and tourism have taken a hit. Hospitality, more generally, uh, entertainment and sports home loans, brick and mortar generally. According to eMarketer, as of a few weeks ago, uh, they said something like 60% of uh, SMEs had been affected. <clears throat> and, and I can't imagine that being any lower. I, I would probably put the number much higher. It's not gonna be 100%. There, there are you know, exempt businesses who are still um, operating normally. So not everybody is taking a hit, but a, a lot of businesses, most businesses, are having to adapt. Some have already started, others are being more cautious and easing into it because they might be less impacted, but um, most people are you know, working through uh, the changing environment right now. Fortunately, there are winners, so it's not all negative. A lot of verticals have seen uh, an increase in business. So CPG, food delivery, uh, charities actually are seeing an increase. There are Fortunately, generous people out there who are more secure economically, who have causes they care about and, and have uh, you know, generously donated more than they had in the past. Streaming is up as everybody is at home and uh, spending more time watching TV. Gaming is up quite a lot. Teleconferencing, most of the people here are probably rather familiar with that and understand that you know, the number of calls that you're on um, has perhaps jumped a little bit. Wealth and investment management are up. People are looking for advice <clears throat> with um, what to do with their money, how to understand uh, changes in the market and, and that landscape. And then uh, finally, 
you know, personal loans. Um, personal loan interest is increasing. Some people are running through their, their savings. Some of this is going to be a trend that is uh, going to uh, persist, right? So for example, gaming, streaming, teleconferencing, as long as people are, are at home, that's probably gonna continue. Others uh, are more of a one-off. For example, in, in, uh, in CPG, while wow, there's a huge um, burst of activity with all types of people stocking up on hand sanitizer and other products, now that their cabinet is full, they're not going to keep buying, you know, huge quantities of paper towels at the same rate, right? Their house is only so big and they feel secure now. So that's going to return to a normal level. Uh, people are probably only going to buy one set of free weights, one new desk chair for their home office. And, um, and so th those will return to a more uh, normal um, circumstance. So th that's an overview of what's happening. And I'm sure many of you are already aware. So I hope some of that was at least enlightening, but more important um, than that is we're gonna talk about what actions can you actually take to, um, you know, to handle this. So the question is, what do we do? So let's take a look at our options. A great place to start in search is your search query report. So for those of you who are, you know, familiar with, uh, with, with paid search, you have seen this before. Um, here we can see the specific queries of users and how they've matched to our keywords. So in the first uh, column in white on the left, the header is search term. Um, we use those interchangeably, the search term, the query. That's what the person, the user has actually typed into the browser uh, to generate a result. And then um, you know, a few columns over, we see the actual keyword that that matched to. Uh, this is the report that is going to allow us to discover any new keywords that we might want to add. You'll notice in the center column where it says added slash excluded, um, we have three different values, none, added, or excluded. And added items are those that have already been turned into keywords. Um, anything that says excluded has been negated from a future query, so it won't match against your keywords. And then finally, anything that says none uh, has not yet been handled in either, in either way. So as you go through this report, you can find queries that are highly relevant or maybe entirely irrelevant. And this is um, where you're going to find possibly queries related to coronavirus. So if you're getting any type of um, activity like that and it uh, is relevant, then you're going to want to add it. And if it's irrelevant, you're going to want to exclude it. But be careful. Google and Bing both have policies prohibiting the use of uh, coronavirus type language and content. So if you do have a query that includes coronavirus and it is a relevant query that you want your ads to appear, uh, appear on, you're not going to want to add it as a query. You're going to want to leave it. But if it's something that's totally irrelevant to your business and is wasting your ad spend, then definitely exclude it. Um, if, you, if you have something with a coronavirus string in that search term and you want it to be there, you don't need to add it as a keyword. Your looser match types are going to pick it up. So if you have a phrase match <clears throat> or broad match um, keyword, that's going to capture that activity. Next, we can add negative keywords. So I touched on this just briefly. Um, if you find yourself with these unrelated COVID queries, you can exclude it. It's pretty quick and easy. You don't really need to go through and negate every possible variation. Uh, in this case here, we're using uh, broad match negatives. So just a few simple negative keywords are going to eliminate the bulk of this traffic if it's not appropriate for your business. And we can do it at multiple levels. So as you see in the center of the screen, this is adding um, these keywords to the campaign. You can also apply them at the ad group level if you're uh, aiming to be more specific. And even easier than that, if you have a fairly large account and you want to just quickly get these up, you can apply a negative keyword list, which um, is just the radio um, button at the top. And for the most part, you're going to want to block these queries. 
Um, if a user wants to know more about a product or service during coronavirus, just for example, they're going to search Nike. They're not going to search coronavirus Nike. That's not really common user behavior. So in order to understand what exactly should be added or excluded, instead of kind of guessing, it's good to focus on the data and look at what's actually coming through your search query report. That'll give you the actionable insight. Okay, next we're gonna address messaging. What are we changing in search? Well, first we have the ad copy, but we also have the extensions. Extensions don't get a ton of attention. They probably don't get looked at as frequently, but now is a good time to revisit them. Um, small changes can be uh, you know, really important. And even though it's separate from search, we, we can't ignore image and video. Um, I hope most of you are running multi-channel campaigns um, you know, for your brand. Now's a good time to mention that your imagery might be uh, warranting um, you know, follow-up, uh, a little bit of review. You might have a video that you made a year ago that you're still using. It doesn't really look as appealing today as it did when you launched it. So take a look at that and um, make sure that not only is your text relevant to your user's needs, but make sure your image and video uh, assets are, are also um, as relevant as you want them to be. Okay, so talking about changing our ad copy and changing our extensions. Uh, what do we want to say? Well, searchers have questions. They want to know the when, the how, the what, etc. cetera. Um, and here are some things they want to know. They want to know availability. Are you still open? If yes, when are you open? Have your hours changed um, outside of just your operating hours? What about customer support? Uh, anecdotally, we see messages regularly about how Google and Facebook themselves have limited uh, support availability because they have a huge um, proportion of their support staff that's offshore and you know those other um, those other teams are impacted by their local conditions so they don't have the same level of availability um, banks <clears throat> have all been expressing their longer wait times for their call centers uh, it can be helpful to communicate that stuff operational changes in Los Angeles recently, they um, have adjusted the stay at home orders such that businesses like sporting goods stores, uh, they're not open to customers, but they're, they're um, allowing customers to buy online, pick up in store. That's what BOPIS is. Get familiar with that term. You're gonna see a lot of it over the next several months. Uh, but that's an important change recently that you know, brands who are now able to uh, conduct business want to communicate to their potential customers. As your refund policy change, that might be meaningful. Then you have the question of what. Uh, do you have items in stock, right? You may have sold out of something. If you have sold out, are, are there any alternatives? Are there shipping delays? There was uh, something I saw the other day where <laughs> it was like, a wine, uh, like a, a wine by mail vendor uh, saw a 100% you know, increase in sales and they had to tell their customers that, look, we're still shipping wine, have no fear. We're just not getting it out in two days, it's taking three days or five days or whatever it was uh, because there's so many people ordering wine for home delivery. Other companies have moved from in-person to virtual offerings. I'm aware of a couple different conferences that have transitioned from an in-person conference to a virtual conference. Uh, I've heard of a lot of individual trainers who, since they can't offer um, coaching sessions in a, in a gymnasium or you know, at their local gym, um, they're doing things online, they're doing it virtually. Or conversely, they're taking people to the park. So that's a change in what exactly the service is. And then there are other value adds. Uh, the other day I saw a TV commercial um, for a local garage door company and somewhat promotional in nature, but they were offering a free garage door inspection, um, which is a little bit different 
they normally used to charge for that. So that's a good way to indicate, you know, another change that um, your business might have. Um, now, not all of these are going to fit into your search copy, right? So there's a lot that you might want to communicate, but you can do it in, in subtle ways. And, you know, it doesn't have to be excessive. The simplest change might just be something super basic, like a call out extension that says open for business, right? Let's look at some examples. Here's a search ad from Bed Bath & Beyond. This is pretty good. I call out three points here. Number one, if you notice at the end of the description line, which is beneath the link, it's the first line in gray text. At the end, it says Mother's Day gift card, a uh, gift guide. And that's not something that would have been changed due to coronavirus, but I mention it because it shows that they are adjusting based on the circumstance, right? They, uh, they have timely copy. <clears throat> you wanna have copy that is timely and relevant. Um, the second point I wanna uh, cover here is a uh, curbside pickup. So the first site link extension, which is in the upper left corner beneath the ad, uh, says curbside pickup, new. Fast, free, contactless pickup. It's very simple, but very effective. People wanna know, can I, can I go get something from the store? I'm, I don't have a mask, I'm worried about getting sick. This provides quite a lot of information given how few characters it actually is. So it's, it's a pretty effective um, and important way to adjust that messaging. And then third, and this might not even be a change, but it's still important to note, the second site link here, to the right, create a registry, they're still mindful of engaging customers over the long term. Life goes on. People are still going to get married even if it's delayed. I'll say personally, I've had several friends who've had their weddings delayed. And so life's going to continue and you, you want to be mindful of engaging, uh, engaging these customers even if right now business is sort of, you know, not business as usual. We got another great example here uh, by Flemings. The first is also from the description line. So the second description line, they say online ordering uh, and delivery. It sounds unremarkable, but Flemings is a luxury restaurant. You go there for the experience. So not everyone is gonna think of ordering delivery from Flemings, like you know other high-end steakhouses. That's an important change to note right beneath that with a site link. They mentioned carry out and it's very simple. Call to order your favorites, the full menu is available. It's really effective. And then my favorite here is uh, on the bottom right where they mention um, gift cards. So they're covering several elements with this. Not only are they offering a discount, um, but they're prompting those who want to take care of someone else or do nice, do something nice for someone else. So whether you have, um, you know, family who you, you want to send a meal to, you know, you, you want to help somebody celebrate a birthday while they're otherwise stuck at home, or you want to take care of grandma because she's not getting out as much. It, it's one more way to, uh, to put that in front of your users. So it's very small and, and subtle changes can really be meaningful here. Remember also that context has changed. So things that used to feel obvious or implicit no longer are. And this is familiar to most of you. People are working from home. They're possibly bored at home. They might be watching the kids. They are missing the outdoors. They're taking care of somebody else. And then you have essential workers who are still working. So think about who your customer is and what their context context is when you're when you're thinking about them the key concept here is tone some users find it distasteful to drive sales right now um, but other consumers want to hear from brands and generally this is my opinion uh, they want to hear from you in proportion to your brand's relevance to their current situation so be mindful of how you speak to them um, you know, trade websites, we, we saw this the other day, have, uh, have been showing like the cliche 
brand montage, which you can find. That's a video of all the major brands with the same format. And, you know, that's what you don't really want to do because it, it, it sounds inauthentic. And fortunately for you who are handling search, in search, you can kind of stick to the facts and you can avoid sounding inauthentic. So that's just something to think about across all of your marketing messaging. It, it, it's a little easier in search, fortunately, to just stick to the facts, but keep that in mind when you're adjusting any of your copy across any of your ads. Next, we're gonna cover audiences by looking at the Audience Insights tab in Google. And as the name indicates, the Audience Insights tab gives you information about your audience. In this case, we're looking at the traits of the all converters audience relative to the US population. So the label on the upper left corner where um, you see the, the blue square, um, that's representing the audience that our Google Pixel is capturing. And we're comparing it to the, uh, the US population. So you'll see that in the screen, there are a lot of different segments we can look at. We see the demo location and device breakdown. And if you look at this regularly, um, you can possibly notice changes here, but it doesn't do a great job at showing trends. A little more interesting and a little more actionable is if we're in this tab, and we scroll down, Now I'm not doing it live, so it's just a screenshot. Um, but if we were to scroll down, we then see the relevant audiences list. And here we're seeing how much more likely members of your audience, in this case, all converters, are, are to be members of the listed audience. So I'll say that again. It's how much more likely members of your all converters audience are to be members of these listed audiences. Now, this varies in terms of the index level, which you can see on the right. Sometimes it's uh, not widely variable. Most of the audiences might be within the two to three X um, level. Here we have one that's nearly 11. This corporate event planning audience, for whatever reason, uh, people who are interested and in ultimately convert in whatever this, uh, you know, advertisers, product or services, uh, they tend to be interested in corporate event planning. So what do you do with that? You, you number one, look to see if there are any new audiences that have come up and suddenly become relevant. And if so, you may want to target them or exclude them. If this is an audience that is for some reason, um, you know, entirely irrelevant to you, you might want to investigate and see if you've got some keywords in there that uh, don't belong, or, or maybe you have a, um, you know, a less efficient account, and you want to consider what that means. But in many cases, you know, if you find something that's over indexing, you want to consider um, adding it so that you can either adjust your audience bids and, um, you know, bid accordingly for these potentially higher converting users. Or you could draft copy that's more relevant to that audience. Um, you, you might feel like they deserve their own specific messaging. So now we're gonna move on to conversions and bidding. Um, and here we have a campaign level report segmented by days to conversion. This is really an interesting one. And, and, and I like it. Uh, it. It shows conversion lag or how many days between impression and conversion. And uh, to get the whole thing on the screen, we, we cut off the first week. But what that cut off was really showing that most of the conversions occur quickly. However, in this case, you can see that uh, as you look at these different day segments, you do have users who are converting at different intervals right in in these different uh time windows and we said at the beginning that conversion rates are generally down as customers reassess their needs so if they take longer to make a decision then your sales cycle has lengthened and you may want to change your conversion window accordingly why well the default setting in google is 30 days so 
if you are missing conversions that occur just outside of your window, you might be underestimating your performance, which can have knock-on effects. It can inflate your CPA, or you might be under-reporting revenue or under-reporting your ROAS. Um, so take a look at that. And again, you know, as users are taking longer to convert, this might be something that needs a little realignment. Um, just to make sure that you are appropriately measuring the, the performance of your campaigns. Um, in this screenshot, conversions beyond 30 days are a pretty small share. So we see that there are only 20, 30, 45 that occurred after 30 days out of thousands. So it, it's only 1%, right? But what that might be masking is that some of these conversions might be very valuable. Some conversions occur quickly, you know, a phone call, a white paper download, a page view, that a button click, that might occur um, you know, pretty quickly, whereas a purchase is gonna take more time and the associated revenue might be higher. So you wanna make sure that you give credit where credit is due. Speaking of CPA, let's move to target CPA bidding. Going along with the change in conversion rate, if you're using target CPA or target row as, uh, as your bid strategy, you may need to adjust your targets up or down accordingly based on your situation. So looking at the bid strategy report here, we can see that the actual CPI for this app install campaign, it exceeded the target, it was $2.35. The target was $2. Now if $2 is a firm target based on the maximum level at which an advertiser can be profitable, then you're not gonna to wanna to adjust it. Uh, but if you can accept a higher CPI for a little more volume, then you wanna raise your CPI to try to capture it. Uh, perhaps a target of 250 would bump up that installation volume to you know, maybe 12 or 1300. And depending on your goals, that might be the right uh, strategy. What about bidding on brand terms? There are two schools of thought here. First is that brand terms are giveaway to search engines because you're gonna get that traffic anyway. Okay, well the second, which is supported by research, is that in normal times, bidding on brand keywords generates a synergy. So what some advertisers don't realize is that paid ads improve not only uh, you know, they not only have effect obviously on the paid click-through rate, but they improve the organic click-through rate. That's what we mean, we mean by synergy. So the total number of clicks you're going to get from paid search and organic search combined is greater than either of the two on their own. So essentially this is a result of improved authority. So because of that, I, I think you want to <clears throat> maintain, you know, your brand terms. Beyond the performance benefits, paid search is the best way to control your message. Organic results offer less control. Paid gives you nearly instant response for your, uh, for your copy, where you know, for organic, um, you're gonna need to make your edits and you have to wait for pages to rank, which takes time. Brand traffic is really valuable and you wanna keep your best customers. Now is the time to retain those relationships. This is how you talk to them with your branded terms. So remember that brand clicks also tend to be less expensive than non-brand because the quality score is higher. Finally, I'll add that um, backing out of the auction for your branded keywords allows the CPCs to drop a little bit, which lets your competitors bid on them uh, for less than they otherwise would. And I say defend your brand. So, you know, to summarize all that, I really, really strongly advise you to keep your brand traffic running. It's not gonna be ironclad in 100% of cases, but we'll cover the exceptions to that here in a moment. So let's look at some scenario specific tactics. And like we were just talking about, we're, we're gonna handle the worst one first. We're gonna talk about what do you do if you're in a cash crunch? I really hope this doesn't apply to any of you, but if so, you know, do what you must. If your company cannot fund operations, you're gonna need to cut your spend to try to survive. But if you do that, um, 
and, and search I hope would be the last to go, ask yourself the question, when are we gonna turn this on again? Under what conditions or circumstances is, is this gonna come back? Just like lifting shelter in place orders, you gotta come up with a phased approach for reintroducing your advertising. Um, you need to continue to advertise for long-term growth. So come up with a plan if you do have to uh, shut things down in the short run. Uh, for the luckiest who have seen sales increase, it, there are different strategies that you wanna take. Established brands should probably shift spend away from branding and towards activation. The reason for that is, you know, everyone already knows who Clorox is. So they don't need to see a brand ad. They need to know where to buy the wipes. So you want to consider moving budget away from some of these other branding channels and into search to capture that intent. Um, there's an opportunity for new brands, uh, for any of those of you out there doing, um, you know, D to C. As new brands, I'm sorry, as existing brands run out of stock, some consumers are not able to get the products they want and they're looking for alternatives. Some consumers are gonna switch permanently. So challenger brands should consider increasing non-brand search and expanding their branding in other channels. If your competitor is overly cautious, um, and maybe in financial trouble and has stopped buying their branded terms, take advantage. Maybe you should buy them. If prices go down, it might be a great time. You might see a lot more interest in increased conversion rates on competitor keywords if your competitor is out of stock. All right, well, let's move to the next scenario. What if your conversion rates are down? In general, you're probably gonna shift budget to branding on other channels. Um, impressions are on sale. Facebook CPM, for example, is down roughly 20%. It does vary by vertical. I've seen estimates of 15% up to 50%. Also, you know, of course, varies by audience. Uh, but there's an opportunity there to get branding uh, for less than you would have six months ago. If you have a long and possibly lengthening sales cycle, probably have an increased CPA. So what do you do? Well, you, you can consider promoting content instead and begin to talk to consumers about the future for when all this starts to unwind at some point. Um, let's say you're a resort and no one is traveling right now. Your search spend is down 80%. You might wanna create some content about the new amenities that you're offering or the recent renovations you just did. You can use Pinterest, um, specifically a carousel unit to put you know, gorgeous photos of your resort in front of the user. This will help you stay top of mind for those customers um, who are still interested and, and capitalize on that pent up demand when the time is right. This won't last forever and you wanna make sure that when it starts to soften, um, the, the restrictions I mean, when the social distancing softens a little bit, that you're still there to uh, um, talk to those consumers. Okay, what if your conversion rates are down and you have a short sales cycle like e-commerce? Uh, in that case, probably want to shift to uh, shift some of your non-branded budget to display or social. So when we're thinking about non-branded search, it, it does tend to have a higher CPA. So if it was, you know, maybe only marginally as profitable or effective, now could be the time where that budget needs to be reallocated to something more effective. Um, you know, whether it's social media or, or some other, you know, upper, upper funnel uh, channel, um, you got to compare those uh, performance metrics to reallocate effectively. Uh, what if you're trying to boost sales? If so, be careful with discounts. This might be familiar to a lot of you, but if you're, if you're struggling with your sales and your revenue and you're trying to you know, juice it a little bit, you want to consider bundling or some other way of adding value as opposed to a price cut. Buy one, get one is great. Um, I heard 
the other day about some retailer who was doing a buy one and get one offer. And this is the brilliant part. The get one was for a friend. And so you would enter their email address and it was a way for the brand to expand their customer base. So the buyer still got a discount, but they were giving that second item to a friend as a gift. And um, it was allowing the retailer to, you know, close the sale, but also expand um, their relationships to new users. You can try free shipping. Very simple, uh, but very effective. And you can set up a coupon for the next purchase. So, you know, maybe don't discount your current um, transaction, but set the user up for a discount on a future transaction. So our discussion today hasn't really been strictly limited to paid search. We always have to try to see the big picture. And so to close this, I want to share a famous chart that still holds true. Um, and what it shows us is that we, we need to maintain our share of voice and uh, in order to maintain our share of market. Um, to be successful in the long run, the question isn't going to be you know, whether we should be advertising but how we are advertising. So with that in mind, um, I hope you found you know, some value in all this today. Uh, we try to combine uh, a few things that were uh, you know, good thought starters, but also stuff you could take away and immediately put into place and you know, wrap with um, the, a long-term outlook on what is best to do uh, for your brand. And with that, I'll pass it back to Michelle. All right, thank you, Chris. That was great. A lot of information in there. I appreciate it. Um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to send them over. Uh, we will try and answer as many as we can. First up, back to the search query report that I think was probably one of the first slides. You mentioned checking these reports regularly for keywords. How often do you think, or do you suggest that someone should be checking these versus how often should they, norm, under normal circumstances, be checking those reports? How often? Uh, it's really going to be a function of search volume and perhaps the sensitivity of the advertiser to, um, to impact. So if you're, if you're only getting so many clicks per day and you're not seeing a lot that's actionable based on your search query report, you, you probably aren't going to have to check it every day or multiple times a day. It does take a little bit uh, of time for new queries to accrue with enough impression and click volume for you to have a strong signal that they are, you know, effective or ineffective queries, valuable or invaluable queries. Let me say valuable or non-valuable queries that you want to address. So it, it will vary by volume. Um, how, would, how often would you do it regularly? It, it's the same answer. Um, I, I would expect now it, it, you don't have to change your behavior too much if your search volume hasn't changed a great deal, um, but you want to respond accordingly. All right. Thank you very much. Um, and where do you find the affinity index for converters? I do not remember which report that was. <clears throat> um, that's going to be in the upper right corner under tools. So where you would go, there's, I think it's a little wrench icon in Google, Google ads, that'll bring down your menu and you'll see a number of, of different tabs and the audience insights tab can be found there. Um, I, I believe it doesn't actually say audience insights tab at that menu. There's like a, an audience tab and you'll click into that. And then on the left rail, you'll see audience insights. So it does take a few clicks to navigate into that. Okay, cool. Um, whoever asked that question, if you need more clarity, feel free to send us an email and we can help you find it afterwards. Next question, how much are you watching and acting on location results as it relates to state by state COVID related orders? That's an excellent question. That is a great question. Um, it just depends on the, on the, on the brand, you know, if for example, 
we've got a client who is, um, you know, running different locations, then they're going to want to, you know, adjust <clears throat> their messaging based on that. Um, I would say that we also have a lot of national advertisers who might not be affected by that, but um, it, it's a, it's a function of how important that is. It's really a, like a, mostly a brick and mortar um, consideration. So retailers that we're working with who have faced store closures, um, they're going to want to keep an eye on that. The search query report, um, which we were just talking about, that's not going to be impacted so much by um, geography. You're probably still going to have, you know, uh, the same perspective on whether a query is valuable. Um, and what will differ by geography is really the the rates, you might see variations in click-through rate or conversion rate. One thing that's important to notice uh, or, or understand is that when you're using smart bidding, if you do have a longer term impact on um, a certain geography, uh, the smart bidding is going to account for that with changes in their bidding. So even if you're targeting at the state level, um, the bidding algorithm is going to learn that conversion rates are adjusting in that location and then bid accordingly. So broadly speaking, it's, it's probably a very, very good idea to be using automated bid strategies. I hope most of you are. All right. Thank you very much. Um, let's see what's next. For the banking industry specifically, do you suggest to focus on branding or loan product types instead during this pandemic period? So for the banking, is it branding or do you think they should be specifically focused on loans and products that are more directly related to the pandemic? <clears throat> That's a great question. And the answer is going to depend on the products. So we didn't put a lot of fine grained data here as uh, with regard to <clears throat> those specific products, um, where you're going to see um, different responses for different different products. So, um, mortgages right now, for example, aren't seeing a lot of activity. However, refinancing is. So, you want to make sure you're capturing, on search at least, all the interest for you know refinancing queries. Um, we mentioned personal loans, so that's another um, example where you, you know, you have people who are interested, and so you want to have budget available for activation. If your mix of products doesn't include those things, let's say you are an auto lender, now is probably not a great time to be budgeting a lot of money for activation because I don't think cars are uh, being uh, bought and sold quite as quickly. So. You know, Ford, for example, is probably going to move some of their marketing mix away from activation and toward branding. All right, great. Um, I think, well, the other question that we've gotten several times, are the slides available? Yes, they are. We are happy to share those. Um, and we will be sharing the recording either later this afternoon or tomorrow. So if you don't get those um, in your email, sometimes they end up going to spam boxes. Feel free to reach out to us. Chris's email is here on the screen. Um, you're welcome to reach out to anybody at AudienceX and we would be happy to answer any other questions that you have. Um, and I think that's all for today. Chris, thank you so much. We appreciate all of your insights. Absolutely, thanks everybody. Appreciate your time. Everybody have a great day and we will see you next time.